In the last talk from uh, Florian and Jan, we heard a lot about uh, testing and uh, the lava test infrastructure. And another piece uh, within that uh, space of uh, testing devices, physical devices, is uh, uh, multi-tenant device access um, software recently has been published open source and uh, so that's why I get in touch with Cedric and uh, welcome Cedric um, looking forward to your presentation all right very good hello everyone um, um, I apologize for not being with you uh, today I recently got uh, COVID and I didn't want to create a, a cluster within uh, that uh, fantastic conference uh, so I'm here remotely from France, and I'll give you today uh, an introduction on, on a project that we had uh, started a few years ago um, that Roger uh, uh, named uh, uh, MTDA, so multi tenant Device Access. And with that, I'll start with uh, the problems that we were trying to solve uh, when we started that project. Um, so. I belong to what we call the platform team, uh, and we need to provide Linux for many different devices. And well, I could e potentially even show you my desk today, but it's uh, full of different devices, IMX6, IMX8, ZC102 from Xanix and whatever. Uh, it, it, it's a complete mess uh, because of all the different boards that we have to, to support and work with on a daily basis. Um, we also, uh, I mean, for the last few years, uh, we have been hit by this uh, COVID thing, and we had more people work from home uh, more than before. And well, ev evidently, we couldn't get everyone to get uh, to bring hardware uh, back home and work from there. Uh, so we needed some some way of easily and effectively sharing hardware between different team members. Um, in some cases, we also need to remotely install our operating system builds uh, uh, with all the security measures that we have put in place, such as secure boots and making sure that the device cannot be tampered. Uh, in such cases, NFS boot, uh, uh, which developers typically like to do, is no, no longer an option. Um, and uh, we needed something so that we could just, right from my home, for instance, program a, a new OS build on my on my device and still have the same workflow as I was as I would use for manufacturing, right? It's keeping the device secure and just uh, installing a regular build that I can then uh, develop or debug whatever I need to do. And the other thing is, and I, and I think it's quite important. Uh, I've been working uh, within development teams for for years, and we had this wall behind uh, between the uh, development and QA teams, and that's a wall that I've been trying to break for for years. Uh, it, it's for sure a different skill set, but at the end of the day, we, we have the same goal, uh, creating a product that, that, that works and of good quality. And uh, one of the challenges or things that I wanted to really to, uh, to get rid of are those games uh, where uh, the developer would say, oh, it works for me. And the, tes the tester would say, well, I'm still seeing the issue. And often the, uh, the, the, the issue is that they were not testing the software in the same way. So we want, uh, or even flashing the software in the same way, right? I just mentioned, for instance, developers would use the NFS boot and maybe booting from EMMC wouldn't, wouldn't work, wouldn't work the same. Um, so for that reason, we had uh, started back in 2017, uh, a, a small Python tool at the time. It was never meant to be uh, a, a, a big project, but more something initially to help myself, to be honest. I, I have a limited office space, uh, as I mentioned before, various various hardware boards that I need to work with. And I was tired to commit to back and forth between my desk and my hardware labs, right? So developers are lazy. <laughs> uh, so I wanted something where I could just flash a new OS from, from right from my desk um, and see it booting and maybe interact with it in some, in, in some fashion. Um, so it started with a small Python application, again, really created for myself initially and really basic with uh, four functions. One was to power the contr uh, to, to control the power of my, my, my board using a, uh, a power outlet from AVCs. I, I have a picture of those uh, uh, later in the slides. Um, also having the ability to buffer all the uh, traces from the device uh, from, that I would get from the serial console into some sort of a ring buffer so that I could go back and forth in the history and see what happened uh, before the crash that I was hunting kind of things. 
Um, and since, uh, as I mentioned, I didn't want to go back and forth between my desk and the hardware lab, uh, a key requirement for me was the ability to program the SD card that the device is building from from, uh, from, from, from my desk. And for that, I had found a, a fantastic hardware project uh, from Sam Samsung uh, called SDMAX, um, uh, which allows you to share or swap your SD card between the host and, and target uh, very effectively. And then the last component of uh, the, uh, the Python application I had created was a minimalistic uh, terminal URI so that I just could see what's happening on the device. Uh, it was really useful for me, and then I started to advertise the project internally. Uh, it was more like, hey, I've created this. What do you think, guys? Uh, is this something you'd like to, to use? And my buddies from Mofo Security uh, felt that it was something that uh, would solve some of their problems. Um, and we've been uh, creating uh, test test labs or test benches on our site using this. And, and I have more details on that later on. Uh, but since we felt that it was useful for us, we also felt that maybe it was, would be useful to some other organizations or, or teams. Uh, so we, together with, uh, with Rogers and, and a few others, we, we decided to open source this project that happened in late 2021. Uh, you have the uh, GitHub uh, location right here. Uh, take a look, uh, let us know what you think. The idea is to have a, 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 a target board. I'm just using the uh, D uh, o Nano SOC as an example. It's a small uh, fact, factor board on um, um, V7 with an FPGA. It boots from a uh, SD card as UART and uh, uh, um, Ethernet. And to, um, to allow multiple people to use that board uh, from wherever they are, we uh, attached a NanoPi Neo that, uh, that we call a, uh, a NASIS board or gateway uh, to that to that board, and this will collect the traces over the UART interface that we see uh, uh, from the, from the right uh, to to the, to the bottom of the NanoPi, and uh, we can also control the SD wire device to uh, swap the SD card between that target board and the NanoPi. And in the, in this example, I'm showing three different people uh, accessing the device, so they they would all see the the, the console at the same time. They could even all type in uh, uh, shell commands. Uh, so if you have like a remote debug session, everyone could chime in and and try to debug that that bug. Uh, and and if and if the other guys are just too annoying, uh, one could say, "Oh, I'm going to lock that uh, the, that target," uh, and then it, the the session becomes uh, read only for for the others uh, effectively. So they would they would continue to see what you whatever you're doing. Uh, but they, they wouldn't be able to to do anything. They wouldn't be able to power off the board. They wouldn't be able to type commands. Uh, but they could still they could still see your progress in terms of debugging the the, the problem that you're hunting. I forgot to mention the uh, uh, the, the the electric relay uh, that would be controlled by the NanoPi using GPIO lines, and that would allow us to remotely uh, turn the board uh, that we are working with on or off as we as we need. Uh, just to show you how it's being used from a from Linux machine, uh, it's, so it's a simple command line tool. Um, so you, you would say where your assist board is. Uh, so this is a sample host name, MTDA uh, for Pi4. Um, so as the name suggests, uh, that sample setup, setup is to control a, a Raspberry Pi4. We can control, we can turn off the board uh, using the target of command. Then we can uh, put the SD card that we have attached to this board. Uh, connected to the uh, to the NanoPi, we can then write a new OS image, like a wiki image uh, that would uh, that I would have built using Yocto or ISA, whatever. Uh, I can then return the SD card to the target, and finally uh, we can power on the power, the, the, the board, see the OS booting uh, using the uh, interactive console that the MTD MTD CLI provides. How does it work? Um, essentially, uh, that uh, Python application um, has two modes, uh, uh, kind of a client and servers. On the, the server side of things, it's essentially creating two zero RPC uh, uh, sockets, one for control where we can send some simple commands such as yeah, turn on the board to, to turn it off or bring the SD card back to the host, bring it back to the target, etc. 
and we have a, a, a console socket to publish the uh, uh, the console output to, to the all the clients uh, connected to the uh, to the service that we provide. That's uh, that socket is using the publish subscribe uh, uh, framework or a scheme that the ORPC provides. Uh, what's happening behind the scene when we send those commands, uh, for, for, instance, for instance, for the power commands, it's essentially a, a GPIO pull and up and down that will, uh, in turn, uh, uh, make the relay uh, give power or uh, stop giving power to the, to the board. Alternatively, we can also use uh, like a PDU client, which is a lava uh, tool uh, to uh, so, uh, power cycles uh, boards. Um, and uh, the storage commands, the magic is happening with the SD wire uh, for cards for for boards that are using uh, um, uh, that are booting from SD cards. Uh, so that's a piece of electronics. Um, um, it's uh, it, it was contributed by the Tizen project. Uh, it's fairly uh, easy to to get uh, built uh, by uh, by local electronics uh, company. Uh, they, they provide uh, the Tizen project provides you all the, uh, uh, the schematics and the uh, uh, assembly uh, ass assembly files. Um, and for some of the devices that are not booting from SD card, but rather are booting like from from USB, maybe like a PC, uh, the NanoPi or the assist board that we use can also uh, make use of the USB gadget stack uh, to present itself as a regular USB. A mass storage device like a service like a USB stick, right? Uh, so the, uh, uh, the 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 board would then see that uh, we have a bootable USB stick and uh, maybe initialize with an EFI partition and and boot from there. The console output, uh, as I mentioned before, that's uh, essentially just a UART, and it's basically just a forwarding of whatever we read from that UART uh, to the publish and subscribe socket that we have created uh, in your daemon. And the console input is just another uh, control command uh, that we sent over to the other circuits uh, to forward whatever we type from, from my local terminal into the, uh, uh, the target board. So in a nutshell, that's how uh, it works. Um, so it's really a combination of software and hardware. Um, I mentioned several times the NanoPi Neo as one of the assist, assist boards that we use or gateways that we use. Uh, there are some other uh, uh, options. Uh, and the Nan NanoPi Neo is, was chosen because it's really cheap. It's like 15 bucks or something. Uh, so it's easy to get many uh, to uh, have a full lab with many different boards. Uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Gunther Burke, had suggested the NanoPi R1 uh, because it comes with a, a nice uh, case and Wi Fi. Um, Oops, I, I have an issue with my display on my side. Uh, some of the other options uh, are the Raspberry Pi, uh, and that was contributed by uh, Jan Kiska. So many thanks to, to him uh, for his contribution to the project. Um, and we also have the uh, Big Old Bone Black, uh, a bit more expensive, but uh, we, we, see, we had uh, plenty in the office. Uh, um, so that's that's another board uh, being supported. How we build the uh, image running on those devices? Well, we uh, we use two projects where Siemens is heavily involved. One is uh, CAS. Um, if you're not familiar with CAS, take a look at this uh, GitHub address. Uh, it's uh, it, it, it's a tool to make it really easy to recreate a build, whether it's a Yocto build or ISR build. And speaking of ISO, it's what we use also to create the, the base operating system based on Debian 11 uh, that runs the Python application uh, named MTDA. And if you're not seeing your favorite uh, board uh, or SBC, uh, obviously you're more than welcome to, to contribute it or, or even make a hardware donation, like it was the case on a NanoPi uh, R1 uh, that was uh, donated by, by our colleague uh, Gunther Berg to the project. In terms of target boards, uh, potentially you, we could support may, many. Uh, so I just listed a few that uh, that I know are being used on a regular basis uh, with our MTDS setup. Uh, the uh, nan uh, the DO Nano, uh, as I mentioned before, this IMX6 Civil Light, IMX8, IoT 2050, a Siemens device, the Pi 4, uh, various IPCs uh, from Siemens and uh, Xilinx boards uh, like the, uh, the MPSOC, MPSOC boards, ZC 102 and 106, and many more. I mean, uh, we are using this uh, uh, this infrastructure uh, heavily uh, for all the projects we, we are working on. 
and obviously we can we can name some of the customer hardware uh, that uh, uh, where the, that infrastructure is being used. Um, in terms of drivers uh, for the um, assist board, uh, we provide uh, uh, several uh, control options. Um, I mentioned the ability to control power. Uh, that's uh, that, that's a that's a driver on its own. We also have the storage driver, uh, like the uh, SD wire that I mentioned, to swap storage between the host and target. Uh, the console to interact with the UART. Uh, USB uh, to programmatically uh, turn USB ports on and off. And I'll have more details on that later. Uh, a keyboard driver to emulate key presses, and even a video driver, uh, so that you can actually see what uh, you, you would see on the monitor attached to, to your board. And more details also to follow. Uh, in terms of making use of the different drivers, uh, we had decided initially to use a, a simple ini file um, um, uh, to configure uh, the uh, uh, entity client demand. Uh, so you, in, in general, the structure is uh, kind of the same. Uh, you specify uh, the, 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 the driver family that you want to configure, like the console or the power, and then a, a, a variant, uh, USB-F, for instance, for the console, or GPIO for if you want to control a 5-volt relay uh, using GPIO lines. In terms of the power drivers, uh, we uh, so a driver is fairly simple to write, uh, a fairly uh, fairly simple functions to 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 create uh, to implement in a driver uh, a configuration uh, function, then a function to determine if the uh, the, the device you're trying to control is actually there, uh, on and off for power drivers obviously, and status command so that you know what's the current state of your uh, power outlet. And then a mechanism for MTDA to, to wait for uh, a power change event. I, uh, on the right hand side, you see some pictures of some of the power uh, uh, outlets. Uh, above is the uh, Aviosys that I had started uh, uh, the project with. Uh, fairly simple to use, it's uh, controlled by USB. And later on, I uh, started to use uh, uh, five volt relays uh, because they are cheap uh, and can be simply controlled via uh, GPIOs. We provide uh, multiple drivers, the Aviosys, as I mentioned, uh, a Docker uh, driver so that it can actually uh, uh, start and stop a Docker container as if it was a, a, a device. It's like a virtual target type of things. Um, the GPIOs, uh, PDU clients for interacting with Lava, uh, Kimu, uh, so if you'd like to also do another um, virtual target, we're using Kimu or KVM. Uh, shell command that was provided by, uh, by Yan uh, to run an arbitrary command uh, to, uh, to do whatever you need to power your device on or off. And uh, finally, a uh, USB relay, uh, which is kind of similar to the one I'm uh, depicted here, but it has uh, uh, so, uh, a USB interface, uh, uh, so you don't need to mess uh, with GPIO lines, which can be convenient for like the NanoPi R1, where the GPIO lines are not, uh, or pins are not exposed. The shared storage drivers, uh, again, the ability to swap storage between the host and targets, very convenient uh, for many devices uh, that are putting for, off uh, SD cards. Uh, so the, the, the driver structure is fairly similar, uh, a configuration uh, method, a, a prodding function, then the ability to, uh, uh, to program or to select whether the SD card should be attached to the host or target, and, and then some commands to write uh, data uh, to that uh, shared storage. The following drivers are supported, uh, again, Docker and Kimo, uh, so that we support all virtual targets, uh, but we also provide uh, a Samsung driver, uh, which we named that way because of the uh, uh, I mean, where we came from initially, but it supports both the SD Max and SD Wire. Uh, they use the same interfaces uh, behind the scene. And then a USB function gadget, uh, which will make, basically make your uh, NanoPi or whatever assist board you use uh, uh, present itself as a USB mass storage uh, to the target you're using. In terms of uh, console driver, I go quickly through this uh, same, same structure. Most of, many times we simply use a a a, 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 UR, a regular UART interface. 
but we also have some special debug boards that are exposing their uh, UART over a ten and ten and port. Uh, so that's another option that we provide. Uh, an, an, in, an interesting uh, electronic gadget that we use. So uh, for some of the projects, uh, we want to be able to um, uh, attach uh, programmatically some uh, in, like 4G modems to, to the to the device we are testing. Uh, so we came up some with some piece of uh, simple electronics. Uh, 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 it's essentially a relay that we also control over over GPIO. We play with the B bus line of uh, the USB two interface. Uh, to basically deliver power to the uh, USB uh, device that we have or cut power. Um, so that's um, very convenient uh, if you have uh, like a stack of different USB devices and you want to, to plug them in or out uh, from, from your test cases. The keyboard driver is simply uh, uh, using the uh, USB gadget stack uh, to send virtual keys. So I'll go quickly through this. The slides will be available. Uh, the video driver was recently added so that you can actually stream the video, the, the, the video output from your device to your clients. Uh, in the, it's using the uh, uh, video capture devices, such as the one depicted on, on the right. And it's actually just providing a, a, a stream or URL uh, that you can then open to, to see what's, uh, what you would see on the device if, you're, if you had your, the device on your desk. Okay, um, so those are, uh, I mean, I try to summarize the basic functions. Uh, you can go beyond and do more with MTDA. Uh, for instance, you can actually uh, use it with PyTest, a Python framework, uh, uh, so that you can create your own test cases and say, I want to power on the board, and then I want to detach a USB stick, for instance. Um, you can do all sorts of things. Uh, Lava is a popular testing framework. Uh, we have a, a, a integration uh, process uh, so that you can have Lava use MTDA to program your, your hardware and, and see what's happening on there. Uh, you can also uh, access your device from, from a browser using the uh, rudimentary uh, uh, browser interface that we, we provide so that if you want to quickly check something, uh, you have that option. And if you I mean, if you just want to create some test cases and you're, you're kind of offline or not able to access the lab, uh, we also provide this virtual target option using Kimu KVM to emulate a PC so that you can also have the same uh, controls, like being able to power the, the, the device on or off, play with USB devices, attach them, detach them as you see, uh, as you see fit, or even stream the video or play with the TPM, whatever. <laughs> So quickly uh, for PyTest, so uh, it's a, a small framework uh, for, for, for creating test cases in Python, uh, and that may be used to exercise your software stack. Uh, we provide some support classes to hopefully make it easy to write your own test cases. In, um, in the example below, it's a simple test where we just power on the board and we are waiting for a login prompt, uh, and that test would fail if after five minutes, nothing happened, right? So nothing was received on, 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 the, on the UART interface, uh, no, no login prompt. Um, you may have noticed that uh, uh, there is a, a test fixture called powered off. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, so those are prerequisites pre pre that we can define in Python. Uh, so in this case, I say that I want to start with my, my device powered off, but I could create some, 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 some other fixtures uh, to do some, things that are more complicated than that. For instance, you could say, I want to be starting with my USB de uh, devices detached or, or whatever. With Lava, uh, the idea was uh, for uh, our QA teams to have a, a full bench of uh, different boards that we uh, that we routinely support and, uh, and, and test uh, with the different operating systems uh, uh, or Linux builds that we, ha that we have. Uh, so Lava is fairly popular. Popular. It's you typically have like a, a main instance that will then talk to a dispatcher, uh, um, and in term, in turn, those dispatchers will then use MTDA to program the board and and see what's happening on the device. How that works? Essentially, we have created a MTDA uh, device type uh, to 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 Lava where we, we specify how to uh, uh, control power for, for the board, 
and how to write an image to it using the storage commands that I've showed, showed before. So it's, it was fairly simple. I mean, uh, the most complicated part of this exercise was really to understand how to set up Lava, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um, the following pic, uh, the following picture just shows you as an example where we uh, we see that uh, uh, an image is being downloaded. Uh, it's uh, in this particular case the Siemens Industrial OS uh, image for IPCs, uh, and it's we are then using MTDI uh, MTD CLI to uh, write it to uh, the uh, virtual USB stick uh, that we emulate with the NanoPi before we uh, turn on the board and uh, then hand over the uh, console uh, to, uh, to to Lava. And then you can see that it's then able to to, to send a login prompt, uh, login as well, it's sending the, 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 if, uh, the, the root password and then, over, then downloading the overlay uh, with the test cases that, that, are, that were defined for, from Lava. The web-based interface, uh, well, I'll go quickly through that. It's, uh, it's actually a way to quickly see the uh, uh, the console interface uh, uh, that we typically have over the UART. And we also have an example of the video stream uh, using that HDMI captured uh, device that I mentioned before. So you can you could be sitting uh, a thousand kilometers away from your board and see what's happening uh, when when you run commands on, on the console interface. We also use uh, uh, we can also use uh, MTDA to measure boot time. Um, since we know when the, the, the board is power, being powered on, we we actually have a stopwatch being started automatically, and we can we can tell uh, via the configuration file when to start uh, counting time. Uh, uh, and for instance, we can we can decide to uh, start uh, or stopwatch when we get a U-boot prompt and stop it when we have a login prompt and then reports uh, the, the boot time that we got. So it's fairly flexible. Um, so we've been using that uh, MTDFA for uh, several years, but uh, obviously like any projects, uh, you, you could always make it better. Uh, some of the use cases or things that we'd like to, to, to add to the project is maybe like a virtual mouse or touch driver so that we could send some uh, virtual mouse uh, events to the device, uh, maybe to, to interact, interact with some graphical user interfaces. Also having the ability to maybe capture audio from the from, from the board just to so that we can uh, we could run some tests and make sure make sure that when we uh, we play I don't know alarms or bells uh, you know industrial controller um, that uh, it's uh, sounding okay uh, type of things. Um, many of the devices that we have to to, to support have, have have like a, a Wi-Fi interface. So if the assist board also um, has a, a, a Wi-Fi. Um, a device, uh, we were thinking that it could uh, uh, expose its own network and we could then uh, test uh, connect, connecting uh, from the target board to or uh, test um, uh, access point and make sure that everything works as expected. Uh, I mentioned before the, 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 the browser based UI that we provide, but uh, uh, it, it was it's fairly uh, fairly basic at this point. We could uh, we could add more uh, more controls. Uh, the console is kind of sluggish uh, because of the uh, mechanism that we uh, we use to uh, to to send our traces back and forth. Uh, the code was uh, it could probably be better. Uh, and there are there are some areas where we could have used a better design or, or write uh, uh, some of the methods a bit better. Uh, to be honest, uh, we could also replace zero RPC with some other uh, frameworks. Uh, as the, the zero RPC pro pro uh, project appears to be a bit stalled, so maybe we could switch to something um, more uh, standard like MQTT. Uh, we could also support building uh, the uh, the images for the uh, assist board using Yocter, and we could also provide a, uh, a Lava Docker image uh, pre-built and pre-configured to use MTDA uh, in, in the backend. If you'd like to contribute, uh, we use GitHub for almost everything. Uh, you can send us a pull request. Uh, you could also take a look at issues that we are aware of and pick one of them. Uh, we also use GitHub for discussions, um, so you can see what's going on there. Um, so we we obviously welcome any contributions. Uh, maintaining MTDA is not our primary job, but it's a tool that we use every day. So we have everything you can uh, contribute is something that we would welcome for sure. Um, we will review the code openly using uh, GitHub. 
so that you can see what we think about uh, your changes, um, maybe make uh, recommendations if you're not familiar 100% with the framework and how we'd like things to be. Um, the uh, we use bike uh, code style to, uh, just to to make sure that the code uh, fulfills some of the uh, standard standard coding guidelines for Python. The documentation is online uh, on readthedocs.io, and we also provide preview Debian packages to get you up and running fairly quickly. So with that, happy coding, happy testing, and we are looking for uh, to your contributions. Uh, I'd like to end with just a, a few thanks uh, very quickly. Obviously, I'd like to thank uh, Siemens for allowing us to open source this project. Um, it's good to see that we are uh, encouraged to actually work uh, open, uh, openly and share some of the things that we believe are useful uh, to the community. We could also thank the Tizen project uh, for the SD wire hardware design that they, they are sharing for, 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 for Tizen. Uh, that was that's a big piece of the uh, MPTA uh, solution. And last but not least, I'd like to to thank some of the uh, the folks uh, that have contributed to the project early on. Uh, many from India, as you can see, uh, a few from from Germany and uh, Canada. So if you're not seeing your flag, I can only um, recommend that you start contributing. So that's it. Uh, I guess that's uh, time for Q and A. <laughs> Question from audience. Um, yeah, I have uh, two questions. Um, first question is: um, Is there an out-of-the-box support for the also for all uh, Siemens uh, IPC? So I'm looking for the Nano Box in particular. Yes, the Nano Box is the 2270, uh, and that works out of the box. Okay. In in general, most PCs uh, and most systematic IPCs uh, kind of work out of the box. Um, the 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 only um, thing you 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 may have to do is configure the the, the BIOS or the FI to, to boot from USB um, instead of, instead of SSD. Mm -hmm. So second question: um, How does it scale? Right. So um, if you have only one uh, device under test, how it looks like for ten, twenty, um, or fifty? And then what's about USB? Um, galvanic isolation issues. Very, very good question. So, in terms of scaling, um, we have actually one-to-one -one mapping between the ASUS board and the, uh, the, the the target board. That's because um, most of the ASUS boards that we have been working with only ha only have one USB function port. Uh, that's why we went for we we were looking for the cheapest option, uh, which at the time uh, was the NanoPi Neo. Um, it's uh, 15 bucks. Uh, and in terms of the uh, USB uh, isolation, um, that's seen any any issues. Uh, but I also must confess that I'm not a uh, hardware expert, um, so I may have done things wrong. <laughs> uh, but so far, no issues were found uh, in our testing with the different devices that we 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 have uh, tested this uh, with. Any other questions? Yes, uh, there's one, mm -hmm. one question from the chat. Uh, uh, a comment, this lo looks uh, really nice, like a great project where you invested a lot of effort into. How did you convince your boss to invest into this non-differentiating thing? <laughs> It, it it also took some time, to be, to, to be honest. Um, but... Um, uh, I mean, because I had support, quickly support from our QA team, and they did the uh, advertising or social, socializing work for me, to be honest. Uh, they were able to, to show that uh, with this setup, uh, they could quickly get uh, boards re reprogrammed, uh, even when they are stuck. Initially, the, uh, like the all management team will say, well, why don't you use like software update? Because you, do, you, you support software update anyhow, right? But in some cases, well, not only the project did not support as a SW update, but also in some cases the, the the device was completely stuck and you it would not uh, boot up anymore, right? Uh, it's kind of all unfortunate, obviously, uh, but in some cases it was just stuck. Uh, so with with this solution, 
uh, we we know that we are starting from scratch every time. We can install a fresh OS, uh, so it's like a clean baseline. Um, so, so, so yes, I, I think uh, the, the management can uh, quickly saw the benefits uh, as we started to uh, 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 get our lab up, up and running. Um, the fact that it uh, did not take so much so so, so much uh, energy to 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 to, to build this lab and, and to maintain it afterwards. Um, One more question from the audience. So thanks again for, for making this project uh, real, also as open source. Um, we work closer on some of the topics. So one, one aspect to share, so I've did a lot of enabling on the uh, IoT 2050 in the past uh, well, weeks. Um, and it proved very valuable having the app, so to say, not only physically besides your desk, but also remotely, including the full cycle. So one of the experiences actually also made besides we discussed uh, how to get the image on the on the MTDA device, uh, always the transfer you build and then you ship. Um, by now, I'm actually streaming. So depending on the performance of the network, you can actually stream from your build machine the image to the MTDA um, assist device and then directly via USB to the target. And that works pretty well um, and gives you a pretty decent turnaround time for things like boot up debugging. Uh, so really a valuable approach and uh, yeah, something which could easily scale for these development scenarios. Yeah, very good point. That's actually so a use case that we uh, we should document so that the people can easily replicate this. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a bright idea. Uh, yeah, definitely something to advertise. And thanks again for your contribution at the end. <laughs> so more questions. Here. Then I would say thank you very, very much, uh, Cedric, for joining us. I hope uh, a few more users or people will start uh, uh, looking uh, at the MTDA and uh, start contributing. Um, and I uh, wish you a nice evening. Bye bye.